And there were some nuanced answers to that question. Joining us now to talk more about the testimony and what banks are doing to assist customers and better help underserved communities is KSI contributor Mark Larson. Mark, lots of issues discussed over the course of two years. Yeah. Let's hit some of the highlights. First off, what did you think of what the CEO said to that question about will banks be trying to really avoid these foreclosures? Well, of course, these are CEOs who've been on the uh, on the hot spot on the griddle ever since um, everything changed in the last election. I'm just still marveling over the fact that the head of the House of Representatives Financial Committee, Serv Financial Services Committee, is Maxine Waters. Uh, I'm not sure if she took uh, any uh, economics course or what have you, but this is what happens. Elections have consequences. I was watching a lot of that today. You know, C-SPAN can be excruciatingly boring, but I think every American <laughs> ought to watch watch, you know, watch the procedures that are watching paint dry. You'll learn a lot because it's amazing to see. First of all, this was called the oversight uh, meeting or something to the effect of oversight of mega banks. And that's all fine to hold people accountable. She says, holding banks accountable. She sets it up in this, this preamble. It was a litany of things. It wasn't just what we we're talking about there with the, uh, the heads of the banks. It was uh, the front office, uh, how diverse they are. I mean, on and on and on. A lot of things that, that are worthy of discussion, but it was set up as an adversarial tone. You know, we're going to oversee mega banks. And she said they did it in the House or the Senate side yesterday. And this is what we do. She even alluded to, honestly, that that uh, we have a majority in the House and Senate. So pretty much she could have said, we'll do anything we want to do. Holding mega banks accountable. Who's holding mega government accountable? Because right now government's out of control. One estimate today shows that $22 trillion in spending is what is on the line if President Biden gets exactly what he wants down the line. Now, if you're on the side, on that side of the political aisle, you go, sounds great. Get a calculator. Look at how this works. It's not sustainable. Um, this also is an example of the prolonged um, Covidian adventure, if you will, that we've been on here, to, you know, for lack of more uh, pointed terms, the endless unemployment benefits, the extensions on this or that. When you get to that point where people just figure, I can wait, I'll pay my mortgage whenever. What this is doing to the, the rental property community, um, you know, you know, real estate, commercial real estate, everybody putting it off to some other point, you know, you can always work a deal with your bank, um, but the adversarial tone is really something to behold. And apparently, um, with the party in power right now, nobody seems to know how this works on bottom line economics. Uh, it, again, it's not sustainable. So yeah. there were a lot of gotcha questions. The uh, majority of the Republicans made some some uh, solid points from what I saw. Not that I necessarily always agree with them, but it doesn't matter because right now it's, it's get as much jam through as possible, make people who are just trying to struggle back to life on uh, their bottom line or businesses or uh, take care of their families after the pandemic and shutdowns about essential and non-essential. Uh, I don't blame people from saying, saying, uh, hey, Uncle Sam, give me some more sugar here, but it doesn't work. And that's what well, I think the biggest takeaway was from this. Uh, banks are in a rough spot. They were. They had a lot of scrutiny after 2008. Uh, there's new, place, new uh, parameters in place after that meltdown. But here we go again in some other areas. Well, I know, as you say, kind of a lot of minutiae, a lot of finger pointing. Uh, sometimes right. it, it got very uh, confrontational, and uh, maybe it needs to. But uh, still, the two million homeowners uh, in forbearance right now. And so I was trying to focus on, you know, what do they do? I mean, some of them are really hurting. They're afraid they're going to lose, right. lose and, their and homes. No doubt. And right. There are, right. And, and Logan, there are state programs for that. California has plenty of programs. Other states do as well. But the problem through all of this is that the, the overall message is government will take care of you like Till further notice. That is not a way to get back yeah. uh, into normalcy here. One of the ways to fix the problem quickly is get a lot of these people back to work, um, make sure that they can go to the jobs that were shut down during the pandemic. Uh, that's real true. Uh, it may be some tough love, but it's also compassionate. So yeah. we're seeing that as well. There Talk was another exchange, uh, uh, Jamie Dimon, the CEO for JP Morgan, uh, arguing that th this plan to move the tax rate for U.S. companies to pay foreign profits to 21 percent, he says, could over time push firms to shift business overseas. What your thought? What were your thoughts right. about well, this, this foreign profits argument? If people uh, like Trump or, or loathe Trump before Trump, uh, there was not incentive to to avoid doing that. More business was moving back from overseas to here. Now it's going the other way around here. And then you add to that the inflation that is off the charts, meat, gasoline, what have you, pressures on the Federal Reserve. There are any number of things happening out of, I'll, I'll just say, the best of intentions. You know, both parties agree to disagree on certain things. But we've never been into this uncharted territory 
at least in recent history for any of us to remember at all, what happens after a giant interruption. Uh, I guess people who were here after World War II could say that was quite a comeback afterward, but this has been different where government basically says, we know best, you rely on us, wait till we tell you to go outside and you wear your mask or maybe two until we say it's over. <laughs> so all of this comes into play. It's all part of the same story, really. Well, June 15th, hopefully it all will be over, at least here in California for the most part. Mark Larson, sure. good to talk to you. Thanks, Mark. All right. See you.